I'm Diana Trevino and um, I'm part of the UCAN team and UCAN, um, Carmen is also here today and Julie, um, we are um, part of the Creative Change project and um, the project of Creative Change um, aims um, on um, the fostering of um, knowledge on creative digital tools for um, European project management and managers in order to um, enable um, to work more people-centered and impact-oriented in their daily work. And um, within this context, we um, organized today this event on the topic of gamification in European project management. And um, the speaker will be Oliver Zimko. Um, you see him already. And um, he is um, the founder and gamification designer of Voodocraft, which is um, one of the um, leading gamification agencies in Central Europe. And his work focuses, among others, on creating um, custom-made gamification solutions for different big companies. And um, so I'm, I'm sure that his expertise will be of great added value today to all of us. And I'm very curious to listen to you. And um, he's going to provide us first um, a short presentation about the topic of gamification in general so that we understand what is meant by it. Then he will provide us some concrete examples um, and how gamification can be used in project management. And in the end, of course, we will have time for discussion and questions. And um, so I would like to ask all of you um, maybe to write your questions in the chat. And um, yeah, keep your um, thoughts until the end of this webinar. OK, now I would like to pass over to you, Oliver. I stopped sharing my screen. And I'm very curious to listen to you. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, thank you for having me. And, and it's lovely to see all of you here. Uh, so let me just quickly share my keynote. And off we go. So basically, I, I try to, as you, as you mentioned, divide this into uh, basically two main sections. Uh, we will spend some time discussing what exactly gamification is and, and what is the theoretical background of, of why it is and can be uh, um, a useful tool. Um, and second part will be uh, more focused on how you can use and apply some elements of gamification uh, in the project management. So um, let me just quickly start uh, with uh, why we are designing gamification. So we have a background in um, adult education as, a, as a, something that I, I graduated, uh, but then we were lucky enough to apply gamified techniques and gamification to all other uh, different industries. Um, this is sort of a breaking slide, but uh, it serves uh, also another purpose. And the purpose is to show you that um, the gamification as a concept, as a design approach, can really be applied in a very different context. So you don't necessarily uh, need to think of it as a, something that's purely digital or um, it's uh, only usable in uh, e-learnings, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, and that's uh, my mission today to, to show you the opportunities and to understand that the solutions can actually be on a, on a quite broad spectrum. Uh, so perhaps many of you uh, already heard the term of gamification because uh, past few years, it, it really has been a, a buzzword and, and uh, a terminus technicus that, that uh, many, many uh, blog posts and articles are mentioning. And uh, perhaps it's, it's always useful to regain the perspective and, and really look at why do we even bother with the gamification and, and why it is uh, perhaps a useful resource for you. And I always try to illustrate the potential of gamification on these, uh, on these pictures. And uh, perhaps if you can write in the chat, uh, what do you think this person feels? What, what's the emotion that you think uh, this particular man is ex experiencing right now? 
uh, because for me, it's uh, it's always really interesting to see how we are reflecting these uh, these images. So if you can just quickly uh, write in the chat, what do you think uh, this person has as a as an emotion? Thank mm -hmm. you, uh, Giacomo. Engagement, disagreement, fiercely, wonder, furious, anger. Okay. Okay, let's uh, anger once again. So let's perhaps check uh, another person. What do you think this this particular one uh, person feels? Okay, I see joy, I see glee. <laughs> Yummy, satisfaction, happiness. That's right. Uh, winning state, yeah, that's interesting. And uh, the third ah. picture, this lady, what do you think? This might be a hard one. It's a it's a mixed one. Mm. Oh, I love these determination, eagerness, satisfaction. Yeah, I mean, I love all these suggestions, and and I love to do this exercise because uh, it shows you that all these pictures shows quite a complex emotions. But if you find what's the common theme about these emotions, that uh, it, they are strong. Uh, you can see that these people are really uh, into it. They are deep into the emotional state. They are focused, they are engaged. And that's the idea behind gamification because these pictures were taken when people were playing a game. And I think it nicely illustrates what the games uh, can do to us in a, in a good sense. Uh, that they can keep us uh, focused, they can keep us engaged, uh, they can keep us uh, motivated. And so the gamification asks a really simple question. Uh, if games are able to do this, uh, maybe we can study the games, maybe we can uh, take uh, a notes from the game design and try to apply it elsewhere in order to create similar experiences. Uh, so I, I know that it might sound uh, as a stretch, but uh, I think the, the initial idea was, why don't we try to design uh, other services and other products and other processes uh, so they can uh, engage uh, our users, our audience, so they can look like this. Uh, and of course, uh, on the following examples, I'll try to show you that uh, it's actually possible. Uh, sometimes it's, it's a bit harder to achieve it. Sometimes it's not that exciting or that intense. Uh, but definitely you can try to move and, and try to apply these principles in order to create more engaging interactions with your users. And in this case, um, managing the projects. So uh, the key question is, if games are designed, can we apply these principles in elsewhere? And these really can be uh, basically anything from creating a better UX of your product or it can be help in acquiring new habits or improving healthy lifestyle, uh, make more uh, effective onboarding to your company, uh, increase customer loyalty. So you name it. Uh, the key point is that it really has to be a real life challenge. And uh, when it comes to creating a successful gamification, it really is about trying to define uh, the exact and clear goal that we are trying to reach and trying to, to fulfill. Um, so to show you what's, uh, what's the uh, example, uh, let's just say that from the public point of view, you might want to improve waste recycling. Uh, so one of the uh, gamified strategies could be, uh, you will turn the trash can into a playful uh, game arcade uh, in which uh, you are asking the random pedestrians to play a game of recycling. And the idea is that you just need to throw a bottle into the correct hole. And if you manage it, all the trash can will, uh, will uh, light up, the, the sound will play, you will earn the score. Um, it's not a really a, a complex game. It's just a playful intervention that allows you to experience a sudden joy, a sudden uh, reward, sudden positive feedback on your actions. And these types of nudges has um, uh, a great impact on how we, uh, how we feel and how we are willing to actually uh, slightly change our behavior. 
Uh, this has been done a few years ago as a social experiment. And when you when you can look on the footage, um, uh, I can I can share the video by the end if someone is interested. You can see that the people are actually changing their attitudes. They they are feeling um, uh, happy. They are feeling the fun aspect of the of the recycling uh, your trash which isn't always the, the most useful, uh, sorry, the most exciting thing to do. So uh, turning something into playful activity can really help you nudge people towards a uh, different behavior. Uh, let's say that you are a company and you want to improve recruitment and employer branding. So that's a delicate and complex uh, topic, but you can use, let's say, simulation like these um, to really uh, show your potential employees what it's like to, to work uh, inside your company. And since you are offering it as an online simulation, you can create a safe place in which they can explore, uh, gain the trust, gain the confidence uh, in order to learn more about you as an employer, uh, learn more about the culture, about the processes and all in the safe space of this online simulation. Uh, this has been done in a local hospital in Slovakia, and it allows uh, the hospital to really get the message out of uh, what it's like to work here, uh, what it's like uh, to uh, use our new uh, machines and, uh, and uh, innovations, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and of course, uh, you can use it to tackle a really serious issues as well. Um, for instance, uh, this is a screenshot of the game Endeavor, uh, which has been approved by FDA to be able to use as a treatment to ADHD. And of course, uh, when it comes to impact like these, I think it's a, it's a great argument for us to keep exploring the potential of games and the gamification. Uh, because as you can see on, three very different examples, uh, you can actually create a really positive impact with it. Um, and you can use a different complexity uh, of, these, uh, of these game design techniques or, or gamification. And so uh, one of the second uh, common question is that uh, we know that the games as a concept has been around uh, since basically humanity, uh, you can still find games as a learning techniques in the animal kingdom. Uh, so why are we talking about gamification now? Uh, I think the, the answer is that currently we are experiencing, uh, let's say, shortage of time, uh, information overload. Uh, we are constantly fighting for the attention. Um, and I believe that the game seems to have a good uh, guidance of how to address these needs. Uh, if you ask or watch players or someone in your surroundings uh, who is actually playing the game, uh, and when you when you ask them why they are playing the game, uh, chance is that they will respond with keywords like um, "I want to overcome myself" or "I want to experience uh, some kind of a reward" or "I want to step out of my comfort zone," and these are the very similar emotions or very similar concepts that we find in the higher levels of the Maslow's hierarchy or pyramid of needs. Um, and I think that, again, uh, adds another piece of puzzle of uh, why the game design is uh, a useful tool to use uh, when designing everyday actions and everyday interactions, such as project management. Uh, so, let me just quickly show you some other examples so you can get the, uh, let's say, perspective of a different type of gamification or different type of uh, application of uh, uh, sometimes complex, sometimes very simple game mechanics. So one of the uh, examples is to use games as a really uh, a platform for learning. Uh, so this is an example of a board game that uh, shows you what it's like to work in a, in a regional bank, what is the culture, what is the goals, what is the processes. And um, what the game does is it switch the mindset of the player who are uh, interacting with the game from a learning mindset to playing mindset. And you can see that uh, 
one of the key benefits is that the the level of stress is is uh, mitigated because you are in the in the zone of a player so you no longer feel like uh, okay i need to remember everything and i need to write down the notes uh you are just in in the game you can play it you can enjoy it and as a basically secondary result of the of the player experience you you learn uh, all the things that the game is trying to uh, to teach you so it's a great thing to or great way how you can align people when you have them on the beginning of the project uh, to align them on the common goal to to find a common speech to find a common uh, common ground uh, culturally speaking uh, or uh, prioritization speaking so um, I think it's not a not a big uh, surprising revelations that if you have a kickoff meeting, you can use these kinds of a simple game just to align yourself, uh, just to get uh, to know each one better because you throughout the game, you can actually learn about the mental models of the other participants that uh, maybe will uh, be hidden in the day to day communication and you can stumble upon them uh, later on. Uh, one of the quick uh, quick tips is actually try to use Dixit. Um, Dixit is a nice game in which you basically work with the uh, very abstract paintings. Uh, again, I can share the share the links or or we can talk about it in the Q and A session. And uh, this game is great because it really shows you how other people perceive things, how they are thinking. So it's a great way how you can spend 10 or 20 minutes in your kickoff sessions uh, to learn about how the other people's uh, mind works. Uh, second idea or second example is uh, uh, on the opposite side of the spectrum. It's really about uh, how to use a very specific game mechanic um, in Sweden, every time you, you donate the blood, um, each time the blood is actually used, you will receive a thank you uh, text message. And this is something that in the game design we are calling unexpected reward. Uh, and it turns out that uh, you surprise players with something they did not expect and, and just to boost uh, their um, uh, endorphin levels. Uh, in this particular scenario, you are typing the positive message also with a great impact and great meaning in real life. Uh, so you get a, a nice combination that really keeps you going. Uh, and in this case, it increases the chance that you will go again, donate the blood because you see and you feel the actual reward uh, and the actual impact of your actions. Uh, another trick <laughs> that uh, I, will, I will talk about later on is to work with the game aesthetics, um, especially when it comes to uh, assigning a, an exciting role to people. Uh, this is uh, an example of um, one American company that uses um, a team of a vampire hunt uh, in order to motivate uh, their employees to be more um, energy consumption uh, aware. Uh, so what they did is they sent the memo uh, in which they wrote that uh, our building was infested with their energy vampires and we are looking for the volunteers who are willing to join the fight. Um, and the idea behind was that uh, each day at 12 o'clock, um, these vampire hunters can meet in the lobby, uh, uh, pull out their smartphones and were searching for these energy vampires, which will be like a um, switched on lights in the in the bathtub or or uh, can be a um, uh, fax uh, machine uh, on the standby mode in uh, uh, and another basically energy vampires and once you once you find one you could just snap the picture send it to the um, HQ and someone uh, would um, calculate how much life you saved. And again, uh, it's, a, it's an activity that many people may not be uh, willing to do in their free time, especially in the workplace. But when you cover it into something more, let's say, inviting, uh, more exciting, the chance is that the people will uh, turn up, will participate, because it's a bit more fun to become a vampire hunter than just to be the one who runs the office and, and tells everyone that uh, please turn off the light. Um, 
another uh, category of different playful interventions or, or forms of gamification are these um, basically nudges. Uh, this is the example uh, of a sticker that someone uh, sticks on the window of a tram. And when the tram uh, begins to move, your task was basically uh, to close one eye and try to catch all the people who are uh, moving behind the, behind the window as the tram goes. Uh, and so it hasn't any higher purpose. The only thing is to provide you a challenge that you voluntarily can uh, participate in. And uh, again, if you, if you look at the face of the people who participate in this, you can see the sudden change uh, in, their, in their facial area in which they, they start smiling, they start enjoying the, the, the simple, uh, even silly challenge. But in the end, uh, they are smiling in the public transport. So I think that's a, that's a huge, again, impact on the real life. So sometimes you, you just need to find a good nudge uh, that can uh, um, start the, the, the process in our brains. Because uh, maybe you remember when, when you were a kid, uh, or at least I did, was when I was bored, uh, I tried to come up with a, with a silly challenges just to keep my brain occupied. Um, so I tried to just go for a very specific uh, tiles in the pavement, etc. And, and this example works on the same principles. Uh, our brain um, needs to be challenged. It likes to be challenged, uh, but it depends on the complexity of the challenge. Uh, so if you just offer some kind of these nudges, chances are that uh, you, will, you will succeed because we want to be, uh, we, we want to be challenged. Now, uh, this is a, an example of a gamification that is a bit more complex, but it again points out the, uh, the overlying principle, which is using um, the before mentioned uh, role game uh, or, or role playing game. Um, I don't know if you are active runners. Uh, I myself um, am a more or less a sporadic. Uh, I'm not a, a very, very good at it. And one of the reasons is that I found it a quite boring activity. Um, and the reason is that when I go to the run, um, usually I'm not running in such a nice countryside as is in this picture, but uh, probably in the urban area. And uh, the other, and lots of people have this uh, similar experience. So some of them invented an app that's called Zombies Run. And in this app, you just put your headphones on and you are listening to zombies that are chasing you. And uh, as you can imagine, it, it slightly changes the experience of the whole activity. Uh, so suddenly you are not trying to lose weight or stay fit, you are trying to stay alive. Uh, and uh, this is one of the cool things that you can do in gamification is that you slightly change the perception of the activity so it no longer is uh, perceived as a, as a boring one. Uh, and you can exchange the feeling to something more uh, refreshing, something more exciting. Uh, but in the end, you are still making yourself more uh, physically fit. Uh, you are still uh, aiming for the for the initial goal. So that's the that's the another uh, key aspect. That, sorry, key aspect that you are trying to do. Uh, and this is a, an example from the <clears throat> Sweden in which they try to uh, introduce this speed camera lottery which was run on a basic game mechanic of, uh, if you go too fast, you will get the ticket, you pay the fine, uh, but all the money collected from the fines are stored in the bank. And each car that goes through this uh, speed camera um, uh, within the limit, they get the ticket to the lottery and they are playing for all the collected money of those who were uh, too fast. So as you can see, uh, a simple idea that really, uh, again, pull the strings in our brains and, and in the end have a real life impact. So based on these, I try to show you a different examples um, and they have some, a few common aspects to it. So uh, I will go through four key uh, takeaways that you can, you can apply uh, basically elsewhere uh, or anywhere. Uh, so first is uh, all these examples are trying to connect to intrinsic motivation. So uh, usually we are trying to find 
uh, something that really shows you the feelings of mastery, that you are improving in something, uh, show you the sense of purpose, that the things that you are doing has some, some higher uh, impact, higher purpose, and positive social status. Uh, as you can see in this example, uh, this is currently quite popular game. It's a very simple one. You are trying to guess uh, the exact word and you are use, you have uh, several uh, uh, attempts and your idea is, and the idea of the game is try to have as less attempt as possible. Um, so as you can see a simple game scenario in which the status is if you manage to succeed, then uh, your vocabulary and logical thinking is awesome. Uh, the purpose is that you have a brain activity, so that's, that's fine as well. And the progress is if you start playing this game, chances are that uh, you will need, uh, let's say, five, six, seven attempts to get the word right. But if you uh, keep going, you can actually see the mastery that uh, sometimes you know what should be the opening word. Sometimes you are able to... Uh, guess it on the on the fourth or or, or the fifth uh, attempt. So you can see as a player to yourself, there is some kind of a progress. Uh, second key takeaway is uh, games are giving you the sense of autonomy and control. So uh, every time you are playing the game, again, when you look at this, it's literally up to you how you want to take the uh, take the game. Uh, the strategy is up to you. Uh, and the sense that you can actually make it on your own uh, is, again, very refreshing. Um, imagine uh, the world on the beginning of 2020 when the pandemic hits. Uh, I believe many of us were struggling with the loss of the autonomy and the loss of the control. That, that's why many people hated the lockdowns. And I think it's, it's really connected to this sense of autonomy. So... If you design any communication in a sense that uh, it um, uh, really implies that, hey, you can do it by yourself, you, you are autonomous in this, then again, you, you increase the chance of the success. Uh, so one thing is to provide the autonomy and complete freedom. The other is to provide you a feedback to, to let you know that you are on the, on the right way. So uh, the games usually have a clear call to action uh, that somehow challenge your skills. And once you overcome the challenge, you overcome the obstacle, you earn the reward. So again, in the terms of this example, uh, the challenge is basically guess the word. Uh, they are challenging your skill of, of uh, vocabulary, of the critical thinking, of the logic thinking. And once you finally made the, uh, the, the word, uh, all the screens, uh, all the letters on the screen start dancing, so you can really enjoy uh, the outcome. And the instant feedback is provided on the several um, uh, layers here, so you can see which letters are correctly guessed and on, on the correct answer, uh, on the correct, uh, sorry, places, and which of the letters are still uh, uh, left on unused. So uh, again, very simple layout. And yet all these things are, are important and, and visible. And last but not least, provide the sense of safety. If you fail in this game, no one will make fun of you because you are playing just for yourself. Uh, no one is judging you. And, and this is very, really important. If you switch the mindset of people uh, that, hey, it's a game, uh, people are willing to more uh, open up. They are willing to take uh, a more ballsy strategies, they are willing to step out from their comfort zone. So again, it's a really useful technique and tool uh, when you're trying to get a good team dynamic. So, uh, but how to apply it on the, on the project management? So one of the key advice that I would like to emphasize is that all these fourth um, pillars of the gamification design should work really as a, as a lenses for you to, to use them, to look at your day-to-day -day communication, interactions, project planning, and try to answer the, the, the questions. Uh, do we actually uh, affecting or, or try to, to affect the intrinsic motivation of our team members? 
Uh, do we know why do they actually care about this project? What's what's the driver for them to be part of this of this project? Uh, do we provide the feel of autonomy? Do we provide a, a constant, if not instant, feedback to their actions? And um, if you take these and and have it as a checklist um, and use it before, let's say, a project session or or important event, uh, then I believe you might increase your chances that the actual outcome will be more rewarding for everyone. Now, how does it can manifest? Um, basically, uh, you can think of it um, as a three different streams. Uh, in one, you have a really just, just applying the playfulness of the games. If something looks cute, if something looks uh, nice to look at, chances are the people will be more satisfied with the communication and, and with the interaction with the, with the overall project. Uh, it's basic human nature. Uh, we like nice things. Um, so you can make the project management more playful by, by using a specific keywords, uh, using specific platforms. I, I'll show you an example. Um, so that's the most easiest one sort of in terms of complexity. Then you have the gamification somewhere in the middle uh, in which you are using a very concrete game mechanics and game dynamics. Um, these, again, are slightly technical terms, but um, if you look at uh, any game, basically Monopoly or any board game, all the things that you are seeing physically are usually the game mechanics. So you can you can have a look on the on the cards, on the on the dices, on the on the um, different money in the monopoly. All of these things are mechanics, uh, and the dynamics is how these uh, different mechanics interact with each other. So just to, that that was a, a side note. Uh, but gamification solutions in project management offers let's say, um, a very practical tools that you can use. You can try them on the, on the meetings. Uh, I'll, I will show you again some examples uh, that, that can uh, give you any idea of, of what this is and how, how can it be used. And uh, last but not least, uh, the most complex things are the serious game. And uh, serious games genre is basically any any game that's that's really designed as a game, uh, you will practically play it as a game, um, and you act as a player. And uh, these are great if you want to teach something or or uh, train something. But in in day to day project management, of course, the the their use is limited. But I wanted to include them just to give you the idea of uh, all the opportunities and the possibilities. So this is an example of a playful design. Um, as you can see, this is a screenshot from Asana. Uh, Asana is one of the many uh, project management tools uh, out there on the market. Um, we personally use Asana, uh, but one of the, and I, I have to be honest, one of the sales points uh, were these little creatures that basically flew uh, through the through the screen once you complete uh, a certain tasks and it is a little bit over the top but in the day-to-day -day, uh, mundane routine of, of just checking the tasks writing down the comments uh, uh, and do this project management uh, 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 routine it's it's really nice to to be recognized uh, by these uh, occasional celebration animation. And uh, it shows you that, that you don't necessarily need to uh, apply a complex design solutions. Uh, sometimes you need just a good old fashioned unexpected uh, silliness, uh, which can help you to, let's say, make the extra step a day uh, just because you want to see uh, a nice animation a nice recognition of your status as a, as a good and productive uh, project manager. Uh, so Asana is a good example of how they are using a playfulness uh, in their design. Uh, the middle option, the gamification, 
uh, can be viewed uh, through the lenses of this particular product. It's called Method Kit. And these are basically a play cards uh, that you can, you can use. Uh, I think they have also a free version that you can, you can just print and, and, and use for free. Otherwise, they have a whole library of, of different uh, stack of cards. Um, and one of it is basically for the, for the project management. And they have a, nowadays, they have a, a really wide spectrum of things. But the idea is they, they uh, borrow from the game design the idea of uh, let's offer a simple card that you can play one at a time. You are trying to solve the questions, solve the quests uh, that are posed on the card. And as you can see, uh, these cards are very simple. It just gives you the idea, the guidelines of where should be uh, our focus on the, on the meetings agenda. So you can use these tools in a way that um, we don't necessarily need to uh, strictly use all of the cards, but uh, you can choose, let's say, 10 that you will bring on your next meeting agenda and try to use it as a platform to, to drive the discussion or, or maybe to keep uh, uh, the meeting structurized. So uh, a very nice example of uh, how you can apply a certain game mechanics like uh, like uh, uh, cards or easy to grasp um, goals uh, and use it in the day-to-day -day, uh, project management routine. And uh, the serious games, uh, this is an example of, um, uh, of a tycoon type of a game in which you are trying to build your own game studio. And these type of simulators are great if you want to train a really particular skill. So uh, if you want to get familiar with the um, uh, different planning techniques, here is a chance to uh, try to learn waterfall or, or Gantt charts. Or maybe if you want to perceive and try uh, to simulate, let's say, um, a crisis management or uh, uh, try to, trying to explore what, um, uh, what should be a different strategies to solving a conflict, these type of games really can give you um, an idea of, of what could be the outcomes and you can try it in the safe space and safe environment. Of course, these are still um, a games that basically can show you some, some of the scenarios, but uh, that's how it should be really perceived uh, as a training ground for you. So um, I spoke about a few game mechanics. And one of the things that I would try to emphasize is uh, if you do not want to hop on to and try Asana or try to download the method kit cards, uh, these could be some recommendation that you can use on, on basically any platform or um, any, any occasion. So first is uh, try to assign clean roles uh, to each of your team members. I know this sounds uh, like 101, uh, but purely from the game design point of view, if you tell the user that you are a healer of, of this group, you can actually uh, project some of the expectations of, of uh, what is uh, necessary from you uh, and what are the uh, expectations that the others uh, may, may project on you. And you can, you can see that if you are basically willing to have this role in the project. And, and again, it can be a good conversation starter of how do you perceive your role in the, uh, in the project. Uh, there are many of these role cards, uh, like um, you, can, you can try to, to search for a different stack of cards, or you can just, just uh, have it as a um, uh, free conversation and, and let the team members choose their roles, uh, how they want to be perceived. And the second important thing is um, if you attach a particular skills that uh, are required for this role, uh, that may help people to be more uh, willing to participate in this particular role because they want to uh, train these particular skills. So let's say if um, participation in this particular project will get you uh, improvement in your critical thinking or, or uh, specific language skills. Um, also people who will be uh, maybe 
considering and validating if they want to be involved in this project, uh, they can always see the end game uh, for themselves from really their personal egoistic point of view that uh, will tell them, okay, if I, if I stay in this project and I'll be active, at least these are the skills that I know that will be probably improved by, uh, by participation. Uh, the second uh, mechanics that you can try is, um, in games, we are trying always to split the main goal into a, a more achievable sequence of, of smaller goals. So you can try to, to guide players um, in a way that they can experience uh, a completion of a small baby step every, every once in a while. So they still get the sense of accomplishment, sense of um, progress. So sometimes it's, it's wise to have a look on the overall milestone and work package and try to identify, okay, what should be really the, the smallest possible goals that we can, we can write down. So even the notion of, of just clicking that this is complete, if, if you are able to do it but on a weekly basis or on the bi-weekly basis, it really drives the attention and drives the engagement much more than if you have like uh, only once in a month um, overview of a, of a much, much broader goals. Um, one of the things that I, I spoke of was the unexpected rewards and the feedback. Uh, so in, in reality of project management, especially on the EU project management, I think it's, it's of course tough to find uh, a rewards uh, and I'm not speaking of uh, rewards in terms of uh, tangible rewards like uh, here are the cups or, or something like that. Um, it's always useful to find um, uh, an intrinsic rewards in terms of if you are, let's say, creating uh, a project uh, that aims to, let's say, transfer the innovations or creating an impact for a specific target audience, maybe one of the unexpected rewards and, and positive feedback could be that on the next uh, project meeting, you can um, collect, uh, let's say, feedback from your target audience and surprise the partners that, hey, this is a feedback that I just collected from our target group that we uh, interact with previously and they are positively overwhelmed and they really appreciate our uh, intentions. So these kind of, of unexpected uh, uh, feedback can serve as a reward because you you'll show the group that um, this project has its uh, meaning it actually can uh, create an impact. There is a, a need and demand for this kind of activities. So again, it's, uh, it's something that uh, doesn't necessarily cost um, any money, uh, but can definitely help you to boost the overall engagement of the, uh, of the team members. And one of the things that I personally uh, often find myself in that, especially when the project is scheduled for two or four years, uh, sometimes it's really hard to keep on uh, track on the progress. Um, and I know that there are many Excel sheets that uh, find themselves in, in the email inbox, but um, I would really recommend to try um, to find a way how you can visualize the progress. Um, even by, by a simple whiteboard tools like uh, Figma or Miro are actually quite useful to, to show the overall timeline of the project that can serve as a, as a team's uh, uh, overview in which you can paste uh, a post-its of achievements or post-its of, of special occasions. So every time you need to uh, have a look on how's the project going on, you can go to this direct link and you can treat yourself with the sense of progress, which I think, especially in the, um, the long-term projects, which EU projects usually are, uh, can can make a big difference for everyone. And yeah, that's that's basically the wrap up. Uh, so what I tried to, to show you is that the gamification is, is a really broad concept. It's, it's really a design approach uh, more than just um, a toolbox of, uh, of a very concrete interventions. Uh, so you don't really need to be worried to play with a simple, simplest solutions. Uh, you don't necessarily need to go digital. 
but if you do, there are many options that you can, uh, you can consider. And uh, hopefully some of the recommendations um, they're useful for you. And if you have any questions, then I think we still have some time left. So I am looking forward uh, to any questions or suggestions. Well, Oliver, thank you very much for this very interesting um, presentation. I think you mentioned so many things and especially the aspect from my, from my point of view that um, how interlinked this topic of gamification is with other areas like psychology, motivation, autonomy aspects. And even if you just have these aspects more in mind while you do project management or while you plan projects, um, this is already something very valuable. But um, I would like um, to now read a little bit maybe questions um, our listeners have. And um, Francesca asks if you can send us all the um, links to the games you quoted. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I'll send the list to you, probably, Diana or, or Julie, and, and I'll be happy if you can, you can send it over. Yeah, thank you. Well, are there maybe some more questions or aspects you would like to talk to? Maybe I can talk because I'm so bad with typing and uh, <laughs> there is not the mass of, 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 of questions for the moment. Uh, yeah, first of all, thank you very much, Oliver, for this input, and it's, it's great to see you after that long time, and I can remember in the last project we worked with, you also talked about gamification, and I think it has, it has a little bit developed in the meantime. Um, uh, what I would like to know is um, the main challenge we have, uh, especially in the context of EU projects, is that we are always, we have always a lack of resources, we always have a lack of time, we have to work very efficiently, we have to uh, uh, I don't know, uh, create our meetings very efficiently. And um, I like the uh, ideas you mentioned on the last slide with a kind of uh, changing perspectives and, and, and try out these mechanisms, because often we don't have any, yeah, we don't have any uh, predefined yeah, games um, or something I like this. Uh, and sorry, yeah, now we have another uh, project meeting here in this room. Um, <laughs> Speaking of flexibility, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so coming to the questions, do you have any uh, recommendations for very uh, uh, easy, let's say, quick and dirty solutions you can uh, implement in some uh, project management situations? It's, like maybe a little bit uh, similar to the to the to the uh, proposal with using Dixit in a kickoff meeting because I think this is a very nice example and then yeah definitely um, I mean the, the, bless you <laughs> my, my, my colleague wanted to join in um, yeah so so Dixit is great as a as a as a conversation starter as as to get to know uh, you much better I think actually. Uh, it's worth to check these, these method kits. As I, as I mentioned, they had this free uh, version that you can download. And I, I tried them several times, especially on the beginning of the projects, just to be, just to check, just to align ourselves, um, to make sure that we've got covered all these questions. And, and it's, it's great that you can actually spend them many times on one card, um, or you can do a, a quick run uh, through let's say 20 or 20 most important aspects of the of the project uh, so that's a, that's the second one um, I believe the the um, I mentioned these these virtual uh, whiteboards uh, like Figma or uh, Miro I'll send you the link uh, afterwards they are offering uh, a nice templates that you can you can use uh, so they already did the I would say uh, the the homework of, of finding a different frameworks. Uh, let's say if you want to use it as a warm up session, or you want to have a brainstorming session, or you want to have a review session. They they have these nice templates that are, uh, to be honest, quite nice and colorful. So you can uh, uh, use stickers and and different types of uh, of interactions. And the nice thing is that they work quite nicely on the remote teams. Um, so you can be all at once at the same time. 
and uh, and enjoy uh, working together. So that that might be another thing. And one of the one of the very interesting books uh, that I stumble upon is called uh, a multiplayer classroom. Again, I'll I'll send you the link. Um, it's um, it's basically there are stories and notes uh, from a professor who was trying to implement some of the uh, mechanics from the world of Warcraft uh, into the daily classroom. And what he did was just he, he completely flipped out the traditional scheme of of uh, assigning projects uh, or or rewarding people uh, by uh, providing them with experience points and they can level up. And once they level up, they unlock the special features that they can do. And all of these were done by, by pen and paper. So it wasn't really any, any hardcore uh, design game. Um, and I think it's, it's worth to check the, the, the book uh, to find an inspiration for really a, a quick fix quick hex that you can you can inspire yourself with and, and apply elsewhere. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the question. Now I have got a question. Can you see me anymore? Or um, because my um, computer is um, breaking down and I don't yes. see nobody of you. <laughs> yes, we can we see, see you. you. All right. Okay. Maybe um, Julie, could you, if there are some more questions in the chat, because I cannot read them now. <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, yeah, there is a question from Mark. Mark, I don't know if you want to say it out loud or if I should just read it. So Mark is asking um, if Oliver, you would have uh, any advice for managing mixed virtual and in-person meetings. Yeah, I think the uh the blended meeting aspect is something that that uh, uh we as well are trying to to figure out i think the the combination of um, before mentioned tools like figma and and miro allows you to really bring everyone together as as you can actually uh work together you you feel and see all the participants directly on the screen as they are moving with their cursors, as they are interact with the content. So I think that's that's um, one of the key aspects to basically have the, the common, and it has to be virtual space in which everyone can have an equal opportunity to write down the comments. So it's, it's immediately visible. Um, and the second, thing is purely technical you, you you need to have a good speakers in the uh in the room i know it it's it's far far away from the from the game design uh discussion that we have but um if if you are stuck with the blended learning then i think 90 percent or 80 percent of the problems are and challenges are solved if you have a good speakers on the on the on the room where some of the or, or part of the team is is sitting up so yeah, uh, try try to find the the interactive tool that that can host uh, your remote colleagues. Uh, for us, the Figma and the the Miro works for the best. Thank you, thank you, Oliver. Uh, we have a new question from Mikhail. Yeah, thank you, Oliver, for the nice introduction on. A mix of gamification, game design, and serial games. And my question, yeah, I, I would like to give you a comment first. So to me, a lot of the examples and a lot of the techniques look like they were meant for a classroom scenario with one project manager who is dedicated and motivated and a crowd of people who need to be motivated and who don't know each other. And so lots of the activities that you um, presented were sort of meant for icebreaking for the first meeting uh, in a project while people don't know each other yet. So I have a question for you know, the late stages of the project or when you have everyone motivated already. So you don't need to mm -hmm. you know, icebreak and motivate. Everybody's ready to work. 
<laughs> yeah, that's the that's the best case. Uh, but yeah, th thanks for the uh, insights. I mean, uh, one of the things that can be useful in the later phases of the project, especially when we are constantly maybe catching up with the deadlines and struggling with the resources, I think the the this aspect of the visual progress is is something that I I think um, can really keeps you focused on on why we are doing this in the first place, and uh, if you have yeah if you have a highly motivated and dedicated team that you already uh, won the lottery, but uh, even the teams that are motivated and dedicated often stumbles to natural uh, complications. And in that case, uh, I think what works well with um, things like Asana or maybe maybe any task manager like Trello or any Kanban board um, is that once you can access a clear retrospective of, of what you already done, and if you um, display it in a way that here are the challenges that we already overcome in the past. This is uh, these are the results. Then I believe that that helps you to stay on track in terms of um, if we need to let's say push once more. Then you can see that we have done it in the past, so it can be re encouraging. So it all perhaps breaks down into in in fact what is the uh, actual need that you are trying to satisfy with the with gamified intervention is it like people are not uh, committed or or people don't remember the deadlines etc so that that comes the full circle in the very beginning of of trying to identify uh what are the challenges in the late phases of the project that you are trying to trying to tackle and uh, last but not least, I think it's it's worth to mention that gamification sometimes it's it's not the solution. Uh, sometimes you what you need to do is a um, uh, a complete different intervention. So uh, and that's fine. It's it's uh, really about trying to explore the options. And if you find the the opportunity, then go for it. And if don't, then uh, it's sometimes better to abandon the concept than than just to try to slap it on, on, on uh, a task that really is beyond uh, the gamified uh, solutions that would actually sometimes make things worse. Thank so. you, Robert. thank you. That's a good answer. Yeah, thanks for the question. Thank you. I see that many people are going. So thank you very much for atten attending the webinar. I don't know if anyone has a Last question. And Maybe if not, I, Diana, yeah, you can. Yeah, I just wanted to, even though I can't see you anymore, <laughs> but um, I wanted to say that it's um, for me a very, very important aspect. Um, the point what you mentioned, um, Oliver, that this gamification elements can change the mindset while you do projects or while you work, and the mindset changing from being maybe stressed or um, bored into something more intrinsic, um, uh, happy or motivated, um, whatever it, it can be. And that serious context can be changed into something more, in, yeah, well, in a fun, into a funnier context. And that this is something very um, useful. And yeah, that's just what I wanted to say in the end. That's important, I think. Definitely, definitely. All right, so that's um, you again. <laughs> that's, that's another colleague. <laughs> so you you work in a dangerous environment, I guess. <laughs> and maybe some uh, practical a uh, practical uh, uh, hint for all. Uh, um, and I hope I'm not wrong, Diana and Julie. Is it right that we will create a, a video on this webinar and provide it on the Creative Change website? And then, yeah. Yes, I think we're going to do that. Yeah. So if any one of because I saw that there was one uh, person jumping in a little bit late um, so that you can re watch it if you missed some parts and if you can't remember, if you just forgot what Oliver said. <laughs> awesome. 
Yeah, so if, if there are no other questions, then, then thank you so much for having me. And, and this has been a blast for me. Yeah, thank you very much that you took your time and all for the interesting inputs. I think it was really an added value. Awesome. Well, then have a, have a lovely rest of the day and, and good luck with the project and uh, good luck. Thank you very much and bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. bye, -bye.